Hello, friends. Welcome to episode 233 of the Nope Coach podcast. I'm your host, Suzanne Kohlberg. Today, I'm joined by the fabulous Gloria Ede, who has just written and published, is this your first book? I didn't ask. It is. Her first book, and I have it here on Kindle, show it off, Waves, Poems on Grief. Oh, you've got the actual book. Yes. Yes. Oh, it's fabulous. <laughs> and this is a pertinent topic for me. So um, those of you who are listened to probably the last 30 episodes or so will be familiar that my mum has passed away recently. And so when I saw that Gloria had, had written a book about grief, I was like, this is a pertinent mm. timing for me. And then I reached out to you and then I read it. And what I loved most about it, it was a quick read, but also potent as in you could go back. So as I was reading it, I took some notes on my phone because I live with a notes function on my phone. <laughs> um, but just things to keep coming back to or just to, I don't know, soften some of the hard edges um, mm. of grief. So Gloria, what, how's the process been for you? Like, you know, in publishing a book and, and putting this work out there. Yeah. Well, first I, I want to acknowledge your loss and um, I share parent loss with you. Um, the book came, it, it was propelled, actually not the book itself. The poetry itself was propelled by the loss of my dad several years ago. And um, I could never have thought that I was going to publish a book about it, but um, just really tuning into the times and that there is a story here and some kind of arc around the poetry that I, I did write um, over the course of some acute uh, months of grief. And even after the acute time of my loss, just sort of living in the aftermath of it in more normal months, I put in air quotes, you know, um, uh, how, how I still was getting on around that poetry was a place for me to process all of it. And um, the, the publishing of it really came serendipitously. Um, last year, I was asked to be part of a documentary series where the, the director had an idea to feature poets, um, local poets who had used poetry to um, work through some kind of topic around mental health. And so I submitted my interest to talk about grief and loss and my use of poetry to support me through that. And so that documentary got featured or got screened in um, September of this year, so just a few months ago. And when the airing happened several weeks before that, the producer said, by the way, we'll have a merchandise table on the date of the night of the screening. So if any of you have something to bring, feel free. And that was the thing that actually planted the seed for me to do some work to put a, a story arc together and, and just publish this. I was like, you know, could I make this happen for the screening? I didn't. It took several, it took, you know, maybe four months beginning to end um to put it all together but it did prompt me to publish this at this particular time and then um yeah just now that it's out in the world it's only been a couple weeks but I'm really getting a sense that the topic is crucial um it's resonating it's also just before the holidays and that's a extra difficult time for a lot of people moving through grief and loss. Um, and so I couldn't have ever planned any of it, but this is how it's shaped up and I feel grateful. Mm, I love that. And I love how, as I said, it's a, it's a, it's a quick read. So, and you know, depending on how your grief and how present it is, sometimes deeper things aren't you know it's not available to do the in-depth thing but the other thing I really loved about it and as you um, held up you can get the print version I got the Kindle version because it only just came out before we we're recording this and it wouldn't have shipped to Australia in time but for me the other thing I thought about it going forward is I personally I don't purchase people flowers or something when somebody passes away because from my own experience something that's going to die being given to yeah. someone who's just had a death it's too acute and I I don't appreciate it personally 
But I was like, yeah. um, I have in the past bought them books, but never one particularly on grief because I hadn't come across one. But I thought that would be something that would make just a a potent gift, you know, for the appropriate person. But mm-hmm. um, yeah, something to to sit with and reflect on because we don't, especially in Western society, we don't have a lot of ceremony or discussion or place. Like often there will be a celebration of life, a funeral, some sort of service. But then that was like, okay, and, you know, here's your 2.5 days off of work and now go um, go back to normal, you know, oh. in quotes. And it's like, and I loved at the beginning of the book, you have um, like an intro before you get into the poems where you talk about, um, you know, I, I think I can't remember you said my hope for you or something. And some of the examples that you gave, like, you know, where grief can strike in the most unexpected of places when you're standing in the supermarket checkout or like for me it was funny I um I dropped my daughter at school camp and I took the photo of her off she went and I thought oh, I'll send the photo to my mom I was like I, you know that so like at the school gate or something um, or washing the dishes or you know at unexpected times and I love that you spoke to that at the beginning of the book yeah it's so true and it was it it was such a and still is such a significant part of the experience is like those very odd strange bizarre times where it literally is like it feels like the wave is just hitting you and you're not sure what just brought that on but it could have been a thought or it could have been something that you saw or I don't know um but I I I felt like that would just mentioning it mentioning it subtly could be the way to connect with a person beyond any knowledge of their loss or any knowledge of their grief it's like what's the thing that will probably connect us so it's cool that that stood out for you yes and I also love how you were mentioning the um like how short the poems are because it's it's actually quite reflective of at least for me what it's like in those very raw moments it's like like you mentioned, it's hard to process anything. You feel really deep, but it's hard to go deep. And it's like the words that had come out during that time, it's very like, um, just like raw and simple. Like, I don't know if you got that in your reading experience, but it's like, it's quite simple, short, direct, blah. It kind of just feels like a blah on the page <laughs> in some respects. And it's like, yeah, because it's kind of what it's like in the moment. There's yeah, and I of... and I love that saying to that because you you might be feeling a whole lot. I love the title waves because you know it can, it can ebb and flow, crash and recede, and but yeah, sometimes there's just not a lot of time to deeply process or deeply sit with something. So a, a nice short couple of sentences or just a word that sits and reflects. So if you're happy for me too, I can share some of my notes. Are you happy <laughs> for me to the um. The parts, there was one part where you spoke about, oh, it was called Breathe And. And I loved the part in the poem when you said, look to the birds who sit on the branches, unconcerned how strong their branch is, for they only need their wings to fly. And that part really sat with me, like there's more to the poem for everyone listening, but it's like the birds aren't concerned if the branch is going to hold them, they can fly or they can, you know, make the leap. And sometimes, you know, when you're uncertain or unsure or things are shifting around you and you're like, I don't know what's going to be the repercussions of this to know that, you know, like the birds, you have the wings, you you work it out. That's what I took from that. And I just found that really comforting, that one. Mm, thank you for sharing. Beautiful. And one other I'll share. Um, oh, the seesaw one. You mm. said, you know, 120 days already only already like the seesaw between the instant and the eternity because in business only versus already I'm pretty sure I've got an episode on this not related to grief in any way shape or form but we can be like oh I only have three people signed up you know and be you know it's like I already have three people signed up (laughs) but when you're looking at grief or time like it's only been this long versus it's already been this long how you bring light to it can be an instant and it can be eternity at once totally and very disorienting because of that too. A hundred percent. Things that like I remember even thinking, I was like, oh my God, it's only been three months. Holy shit, it's already been three months. Like 
only already and and that's that's kind of how the poem came out it's like yeah that thought it reminds me of the quote um Sophia Bush says you can be a masterpiece and a work in progress simultaneously something along those lines I've butchered it but it's kind of like we you know we can be working towards something but also own that we're already really good at something so you know it can it's only been this amount of time and simultaneously it's already been this amount of time like they can coexist Mm -hmm. so cool Oh, so I'm just looking at time. Probably got time for one more. What else did I write about? Oh, you had another poem called Something. Oh, I loved this. When you said having something to look forward to, like a trip or an event or a visit or something, not to fix, but just to remind you that even in your grief, you're still alive. And I think that's really important because I think sometimes we try and fix it. And there's a little, I don't know if you've seen the meme or GIF image going around, and it's saying how we thought grief would happen and it's a picture of a circle oh, yeah. and it shrinks, but instead we grow around it. Oh, and yeah. that Beautiful. poem reminds me of that. It's like have something to look forward to, um, not to fix what it is that you're feeling, but, you know, holding space for both. Yeah, because it won't fix anything and it doesn't fix anything, but at the very least it helps rem- remember or at least for me it helps remind me that okay I'm still here like there's still things that I could do I'm still alive like there are people that still care that I still love that I I, there are still activities that I can still engage with there's still trips I can take there are still there's still there's still something you know Um, Uh, yeah I love that so thank you so much for joining us, Gloria. Can you let the listeners know what you do and where they can find you? Obviously for the book, um, it's on Amazon uh, for those okay. of you listening in Australia. But it's probably in other places as well. And you can get it on Kindle or you can grab the, you know, the actual copy of it. But um, yeah, what do you do and where can people find you? Amazing. They can find me at GloriaEde.com. And I'm a life and leadership coach and also a grief guide. And I help people navigate through transitions of all kinds. Um, And as I do that, more than anything, helping them tap back into their inherent creativity so that they can be the person that they need to be to do the things that they care to do in the world. I love that. So Gloria is the traditional spelling, G-L-O-R-I-A, and then Eid is E-I-D. For anyone listening, because I don't do show notes. (laughs) (laughs) I love it. Thank you so much for joining us, Gloria. Thank you so much for tuning in, everyone. And yeah, if you have, wherever you are on, on your grief journey, you know, I highly recommend um, grabbing Gloria's book and just, yeah, those little snapshots that we've shared in this episode, may they give you some touchstones um, on your own journey. Beautiful. Thanks Thanks for for tuning in. Bye for now.